All right. So Fox News ratings are out. You know, they they unveiled their big new lineup, the big primetime lineup that was somehow going to fix all their troubles. So they're trying to be politically correct enough, right? Not get themselves in trouble. Hopefully not really alienate anyone. Good luck, right? In this current world in which we live, while simultaneously still being able to deliver on the viewership, except that, you know, again, this is easier said than done. And even though they put somebody in the slot that they thought would kind of appease the base that used to watch Fox, most of whom don't anymore, well, it didn't quite work because the numbers reflect, well, quite quite a significant downturn. We're talking 800,000 viewers less at 8 p.m. on Fox News Than they used to get with the former guy, Tucker Carlson, in the seat. So Jesse Waters took over again. Like you would think, Jesse Waters, he's going to appeal to a lot of the people that like Fox. But, you know, it's not that easy. I'm just going to say that again. Jesse's great. I like Jesse a lot. He's a wonderful guy. But he doesn't quite have the same sort of edge, shall we say, or the same kind of dare I say, academic approach, because it wasn't really academic with Tucker, but he had kind of a contrarian sort of interesting view on things that you're not going to get everywhere. Right? You're not going to, but Jesse, um, who, by the way, used to do a great job on, on Bill O'Reilly when he did those like man on the street things and he'd ask people questions and that, that was like him at his best. But as an anchor, it's an entirely different sort of role. And I think it's a more challenging role for him. Certainly at 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock is the big, you know, that's a big kahuna, right? Like, you got to really be able to deliver there. And so what they have found is something that they probably didn't anticipate. For example, the demos were not so hot. We're talking 161,000 viewers in that key 25 to 54-year-old demo. Apparently, Tucker had something like 400, not not quite 400. Well, actually, according to this data, usually more than 400,000. So the the demo that people talk about, even if you're getting millions of viewers, is pretty darn critical because the demo sort of everything, right? Because advertisers, they base what they sell off of the demo. And so you want young people, of course, watching your network because you want to keep growing. And so thus, the demo is pretty darn important. But these demo numbers are not good. In fact, he actually went down a little bit from Laura Ingram, who was moved to seven o'clock. Which I think is, you know what, it's good for Laura, it's better for her life, it it might be seen as a little bit of a demotion, but the truth is, 7 o'clock is a more reasonable time, don't you think, to be on television. And so I I know a lot of people were actually pleased with that only because they like her and want to be able to watch her at an earlier hour than 10 o'clock. So the new lineup, of course, was Laura at 7 and... uh, The other guy at eight, Jesse, and then followed by Hannity and then Greg Gutfeld. Now, Greg actually is he's a unique character and he's got a little bit of sarcasm that um, plays well for a lot of people. And I think he actually may have had the best night of all. Hannity got only 150,000 demo viewers, which is apparently like 50,000 less than Rachel Maddow. So they're going to play it off like, this is great. This is great. You know, we still won the night, but look, I've worked there. I know how this goes. This is what you call a little bit of panic time. I mean, I would just say, hey, everybody take it easy because it's July, end of July. You're going into August. And so you got to be able to kind of find your groove and hit the ground uh, running eventually. Like it's not going to all happen right in one night. But I would also say this, this same particular management team, I think, had quite a failure before. Remember when they tried to put, what was that show, The Five on at nine o'clock? <laughs> I, I heard that was Murdoch's idea. Um, the Five is a great show. It's a fun show. It's wonderful at five o'clock. You don't want to watch it at nine o'clock. And so you might be asking a similar question here at eight o'clock. In other words, Jesse's on the five at five o'clock. Like maybe that works a little bit better. Maybe you need a little bit. Maybe he's not like the leading anchor guy, right? Or it doesn't have quite the edge to his story ideas and takes that you need at eight o'clock. I mean, very, very talented, hugely talented. But sometimes you kind of need to know where to play people. Like I'll give you an example. Do not ever put me on in the morning, (laughs) ever, ever. You know, I may seem bright and cheery and all that, but you never want me as a morning show host. 
I am way too serious, like way too serious. I would have a hard time with the cooking segments. I would just, uh, I, I wouldn't know what to do when they, you know, want to go out and jump on a trampoline. Like it just, it wouldn't be me, right? Like so it would be completely wrong. But I've had a lot of producers say, oh, you know what, Trish, you'd be great on the morning show. And ah, no, 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 no. Like I, I'm, I'm too dense and intellectual and too wonky and interested in policy to ever be able to pull off a morning show. I mean, I, I, I can't act that well, <laughs> certainly not well enough for that. So again, like it's knowing your team and knowing how to use them appropriately. I, I wouldn't quibble with the Laura thing. I actually think that seven o'clock is, is quite great. And even Greg at, at 10 o'clock, um, it's nice to be able to get your comedy a little bit earlier, right? Like, you know, cause everybody wants to go to bed at some point, but the eight and the nine, they're going to have a big hole there. You need more. You, you need a richness. Um, you need an angle. You need intellect. I mean, you, you really do. And I, I, I'm, I'm afraid that that is going to prove to be increasingly more challenging for them. But look, you know, none of it matters anyway, because let's face it, network TV is over, done, kaput. It is. Trust me on this. No one in their right mind would ever want to go work for a network right now. They better be paying those guys really, really well because you think of what they could do on their own, right? I mean, it's over. Legacy media is not trusted by the public. And having worked in it my whole career, I'll tell you this, it's no fun because you're dealing with internal politics. You're dealing with White House politics. I mean, you know, when your news director gets a call from the White House saying, hey, why are they talking about this, that, or the other? That's no fun. So then you're also trying to manage the investors, right? The ESG guys that have bought up, what, 5% of Class B share Fox shares, and, and they may have nearly 5% of A shares as well. This is the stock. Um, well, then you're, you're having to answer to a whole lot of people, and that can run you into trouble. 